Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jason. Welcome to One Take Wednesday, a weekly show where I take a look at the most interesting comments on my channel and try to do a live demo to see if I can help people out that are having problems with anything home recording related that I've talked about on any one of my videos. So over the last week, I uh, noticed that there were some comments around connecting the Spark Amp uh, either to Windows or having problems with GarageBand on the Mac. So here's a quick demo for what you should see if you're a Mac user. So I do not have the Spark plugged in right now. So in GarageBand, if you go into your preferences and into audio, you're gonna see all of your input and your output devices here. So I don't have the Spark in the list right now. These are all of the existing devices that are connected right now. So the Mac ecosystem is pretty good. As soon as you plug it in, it's gonna show up right away. Boom. There we go, Spark USB. So if you don't see Spark USB pop up right away, there might be something in your audio MIDI settings where that stuff gets set up. So a uh, quick thing to get into your preferences, and this is pretty much a universal with any Mac um, program, you press command and comma, and it's gonna pop up your preferences. So if you don't see that, go into your audio MIDI audio MIDI setup, which is inside of your system preferences. So another way to get to that is open up your system preferences, and then you can just type in your, uh... oh, sorry, I'm a liar. It's in your utility folder. So this is the great thing about doing a live show. Um, so in your utility folder, in your applications, you're gonna find the audio MIDI setup, and that's gonna bring up all of the configuration for all of your devices. So if you don't see it pop up in GarageBand, you probably won't see it pop up here, but what you can try is you can try adding an actual device. And maybe it's going to show in this list of things that might be available. I'm not entirely sure. Mac uh, ecosystem's usually pretty good, so if I unplug this, Spark's gonna disappear from everywhere. If I plug it back in, it's gonna pop up right away. So there are no drivers with GarageBand, there's no drivers with Logic or uh, any other things specifically for the um, Spark Amp. So one thing, maybe they're gonna add this because they do have a Spark USB driver for Windows. So if you go onto their website, I'll put this link in the description as well. They have a positive grid USB audio driver. It's an EXE file, so obviously that is only gonna work with Windows. Um, I didn't see if there was a way to extract this and actually try and use it with a, uh, to see if you can just get access to an actual um, driver inside that package. Because sometimes you can open up an application file or an EXE and there might be a Mac OS folder in there, which I discovered if you are on a Windows system. So I downloaded the same file on a very, very old Windows PC. And I, I don't even know how to do screen recording on a PC. So uh, I don't have any software on here. This is a very, very old um, computer that my son used to use. There's a Mac OS X folder inside of that EXE and there's an application inside of it. So it could be that if you download that file and you wanna mess around trying to open that up on a Mac, maybe you can do that. And the reason I say that is I used to have a Steinberg audio interface and it actually would use the Yamaha USB driver. So one thing that you may want to try, depending on which version of Mac OS that you have, maybe look for a universal Mac USB driver and that might help it recognize. So the other thing to take a look at is the actual system requirements. So I'm gonna drop this link in the description as well, but uh, this goes and says what DAWs are compatible with positive grid software. Now this is the bias FX stuff, but maybe they have um, the same compatibility with the, the Spark uh, app and the amp and how it's connected. So it could just be maybe you've got an older version of Mac OS um, or um, something like that that's causing it to not connect. But uh, it does work pretty much right away. So 
I'm not gonna use that multi device that I just created. I'm gonna go in here and check and the Spark 40 USB is set up in here and it just works right away. As all good stuff in the Mac ecosystem does. So I can go in here right away. If I turn on monitoring, actually I'm not gonna turn on monitoring because that's gonna blow my head off. So what I will do, turn that up a little bit. And I'm gonna add a new track. So there's only one input on the Spark, so it's gonna show you that my instrument is connected with Spark 40 USB, input number one, create that audio, and then hit record. Wow, that's interesting. It didn't actually record anything. So let's try this again. Boom, actually, you know what? I'm going to close GarageBand down and I'm going to open it up again. Let's not save this because I've been mucking around with some other settings. So I'm going to open this up again and create a new project. Empty project, input device is Spark 40 USB. Output device is Spark 40 USB. I'm going to record. There you go. I can turn that volume down. There. So I'm going to turn the monitoring off. And there was another question around a problem with um using some of the built-in effects that are inside of GarageBand. So uh, again, if you're using the Spark as an audio interface in the actual app, uh, in the app where you have this set up, all of these options, turn them off. So flick all of these up so they're gray, noise gate and everything. So now, nothing. There's still a signal in GarageBand, but it's not actually going to do anything. So if I go ahead and uh, just add a, well, let's just add a crunch guitar, uh, cheap studio time. Hey, who doesn't like cheap studio time? All right. So now I do need to turn this up a little bit. I need to turn monitoring on. There we go. Wow, that is cheap studio time. Let's try something different. Let's go double driven. So now if you, obviously if you turn one of these things on. Yeesh. Yikes. And will it feedback? Come on. Oh, didn't do it. Okay. So there we go. GarageBand has detected feedback, so it's going to give you a prompt to turn things on or off. But if you're still getting weird noise while you're doing this, or um, the Spark amp isn't recognizing as a USB device, might be a, a um, OS update that's available, so uh, you'll need to know what version of Mac OS you're running. So that's go to the Apple, click about this Mac, and it's going to tell you which ones, uh, uh, which version that you have set up on here. Now, uh, I would assume that this should work with pretty much any version of Mac OS that's relatively recent. So if you have any Mac product that's you know six, seven years old at least, it should work just fine. And on a PC, uh, it should be the same type of thing because you can also just install that ASO driver. So that should keep you rocking pretty good. So this is just a short video, been crazy busy at work, but uh, thanks so much for all the comments. I started the three minute tutorials. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing those every Tuesday and Thursday instead. 
uh, because there is just so much stuff um, in the backlog of videos that I want to get out to help people get started with their home recording. So remember to like and subscribe and hope you enjoyed this very, very short video, but uh, try some of those things that I mentioned if you're having any problems getting your Spark connected. Um, the last thing actually that I'm gonna mention quickly is when you are in your Bluetooth settings, you should see the Spark 40 audio and the Spark 40 BLE, and that will tell you that you are connected to the Spark through the Spark app that controls the amps and then Spark 40 audio, which will actually stream the audio through the device. So that's it for this video. Still got a whole pile of day job stuff to do. So again, like and subscribe, leave a comment about what else you would like to see on the show, and I'll see you on the next one.